Okay, so what I have for you guys here today is my recreation of the pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. In my opinion, this tastes a little bit better, but maybe I'm biased because it's my recipe. But it's really, really simple, and I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as I do. I make this quite a bit, and everybody tells me it's pretty good. So what you're going to need is you're going to need strong brewed coffee. You can use espresso if you'd like. I'm using the Starbucks caramel flavored coffee. But any kind will really do, just make sure you brew it really, really strong and really, really dark. Then you're going to need 100% pure pumpkin, um, otherwise you can use pumpkin pie filling. The pumpkin pie filling has spices, so you will need to adjust your spices accordingly to that because you don't want too much in it. But I'm just using the plain 100% pure pumpkin. Then you're going to need caramel ice cream topping. Try to make sure you get the thick kind of caramel because the stuff in the bottle is a little bit too sweet and a little bit too runny for this. It will work, but in my opinion, this stuff works a little bit better. Then you're going to need vanilla flavoring or vanilla extract, whatever you have. If you use the flavor, the imitation vanilla flavoring, you will need to add a little bit more than if you were using 100% pure vanilla extract. Um, this is just what I had on hand, so this is what I'm using. Then you're going to need your spices. You can use pumpkin pie spice. Um, you'll have to adjust that accordingly. I do. I will post the variation with the uh, pumpkin pie spice, but I use them separately just so I can adjust it to my taste. Um, you're going to need nutmeg, cloves. You can use them ground or whole. I just use the whole ones because I like the flavor better. I think it's a little bit stronger. You will have to pull these out at the end of the recipe though. Then you're going to need allspice. Um, I'm using the whole berries. Once again, you'll have to pull these out at the end, but I think the flavor is a little bit more intense with them. You're going to want some ground ginger, and then you're going to want some cinnamon. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is take your milk and measure about a cup. A little more, a little less, depending on your uh, batch size that you're making, but I'm just going to do a small batch for you guys here just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna use a cup. And just pour that right into your saucepan. Okay, so by the magic of editing this video, I have already measured about a half of a cup of pumpkin. Um, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, but there's a half a cup in here. And we're just going to add that right to our milk. Being careful not to splash it because the milk is warm now. And we don't want to get burned. So just add that right into there and kind of break it up and stir it around. Okay, so I'm just gonna get that pumpkin straight into the milk till it's nice and smooth. It does melt in there pretty nice, so it, you can use a whisk if you want, but a spoon works just as fine. All right, so once we have our pumpkin added to our milk, we're going to take our spices. And for the nutmeg, I'm just going to use a fourth of a teaspoon because nutmeg is a little bit strong. For me anyways, the taste is pretty strong. Then we're going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon to this. Then I'm just gonna take a fourth of a teaspoon of the ground ginger. And then I'm going to add in my whole cloves. I'm just going to use two. And they look like this. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but that's what they look like. Okay, so I got those in there. And then I'm going to add my allspice berries. And I'm just going to put two of those as well. And these just look like little BBs. They're just really tiny. So I'm going to pop two of those in there. And 
Then I'm going to add my vanilla. And I'm just going to be using two teaspoons of this. Okay, once you get your vanilla added, then it is time to add in the caramel. And I'm going to be using two tablespoons worth of caramel in this recipe. Okay, so once we get our caramel added, we're gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. To a medium high heat. Until it starts to sort of steam a little bit. Okay, so once we get our milk all heated up and our pumpkin and everything's nice and starting to steam, then we're going to add in our sugar. Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this a little bit, but I would say about two tablespoons worth of sugar. If that seems like a lot to you, then you can adjust that, like I said, um, but that's just how I like it. And you can always add more or a little bit less. Um, depending on how sweet you want it. You can use different types of sweeteners. I just like the flavor of the brown sugar, but something like stevia or agave nectar or really anything Splenda will do in this recipe. So as you can see, it's kind of thickening a little bit and that's because of the pumpkin. And we're just going to mix that all in so the sugar gets all incorporated into that. Okay, so once you get everything all nice and hot and bubbly, um, I don't know how well. I'll try to zoom you guys in so you can see the little bubbles. Um, I don't know how well this is going to focus in on it because... There we go. If you can see that, that's what you want to look for is those tiny little bubbles starting. <laughs> So then once we get it to that point, then that's when we're gonna start adding in our coffee. And you're gonna add it and stir it in at the same time. And this part, there is no, oops, there we go. Let's slide off. So specific amount, it's just to the point that you like it. Um, if you like more pumpkin flavoring, like I've said, a million times already uh, but I add usually I add about four to five cups worth so we're just gonna let that simmer just for a little bit longer just to get all those flavors nice and incorporated and once you get it to where you want it, um, flavor wise, then you can do a couple of things. You can either drink it just like this, oh, top it with a little bit of whipped cream and cinnamon and a drizzle of caramel if you like. Otherwise, I like to put mine in mason jars and then we put it in the, put it in the refrigerator and let it set overnight just so those flavors kind of, I don't know, mingle together and get more intense. And then you'll have that real pumpkin spice latte taste to it. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, then don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. So thanks for watching.